Welcome to the Rochester, New Hampshire History Podcast, a monthly show that will shine a light on a piece of history that has been all but forgotten. Can history repeat itself? Do Christmas miracles actually happen? In December 1941, many in Rochester believed that both could occur. To see how this would be, let's go back to the year 1918. America is fighting the First World War and Rochester, like most towns, provided troops for the war. Among the soldiers in France was George Maxfield of Rochester. In June 1918, the Rochester Courier reported the sad news that George Maxfield was killed in battle. He was the first Rochester soldier to die in combat in World War I, and the Rochester VFW was named in his honor. Let's jump ahead to 1919 when another George Maxfield was born in Rochester. He was named in honor of his cousin, who recently perished in the war. He was the son of Mr. and Mrs. Joseph Maxfield, and they lived on Pine Street. George attended Holy Rosary in Rochester High Schools, where he played hockey and was in the school band. He loved music and became an accomplished musician. He left high school in his sophomore year and played regularly with local bands and conducted his own orchestra. He joined the U.S. Navy in August of 1940 and spent eight months at the Navy Music School in Washington, D.C., before being assigned to the battleship West Virginia as a part of the ship's band. In December 1941, the West Virginia was stationed at Pearl Harbor Naval Base in Hawaii. On December 7th, the Japanese Navy attacked Pearl Harbor. After 90 minutes, the devastating attack was all over. Of the eight battleships at Pearl Harbor, all were damaged and four of them were sunk, including the ship George was on, the USS West Virginia. Over 2,400 Americans were killed and more than 1,100 were wounded during the battle. George's parents did not hear from their son immediately after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Then on December 16th, the Maxfield family received a Christmas package from George. The package was mailed a week before the Japanese attack. Then a few hours later on the same day, their joy turned to sorrow as they received a telegram from the U.S. Navy informing them that George was killed at Pearl Harbor. On December 18th, just days before George's 22nd birthday, the Rochester Courier's headline read, Namesake of First Rochester World War Casualty killed in attack at Pearl Harbor. He was the city's first casualty of World War II. Many said that history had repeated itself as the same named person was the city's first casualty in two consecutive wars. Back then, Rochester was still a small city and everyone knew each other. The whole city was saddened by the loss. His funeral mass was scheduled to be at Holy Rosary Church a few days before Christmas. Only a miracle could prevent Christmas of 1941 from being the worst Christmas ever for the Maxfield family. On the eve of the funeral, the Christmas miracle occurred. Another telegram arrived. It contained the happy news that George was found alive and was well, and he would communicate with them in the immediate future. The headline of the next Rochester Courier read, Rochester man reported missing, found at sea. Maxfield safe. Parents overcome at news. We could never have a finer Christmas gift than this, George's parents exclaimed as tears of joy streamed down their faces. George soon sent a handwritten letter to his parents, stating that he was in a hospital and he lost all of his clothing and personal belongings due to the attack. He assured his parents he was all right and told them not to worry. George Maxfield married Lorette Legu in 1944. He survived World War II and left the Navy in 1946. He passed away in 1968, 27 years after it was reported that he was killed at Pearl Harbor. He is buried in the Holy Rosary Cemetery in Rochester. This ends the podcast. If you have any questions or comments, please email bobgriffinpodcast at gmail.com. And come back next month for another episode of Rochester, New Hampshire History.